Um, I was thinking of what I'm going to do. I haven't had a Sunday off like in years where I actually like didn't go to church once uh, form. So I thought I'm going to take Sunday off. And so I spent the uh, morning watching YouTube videos. And um, when I got the call from uh, um, Rick and, uh, and Dave, I was actually watching a, a video on uh, Philadelphia mob. <laughs> I didn't know if that was, you know, an omen of something or whatnot. I was actually on the Hitman from the Philadelphia Mob, a, a, a documentary, which uh, kind of a jarring kind of juxtaposition there. And thank you, uh, Wayne Hoff, for preaching in my stead. Excellent sermon, excellent encore presentation for the Jesus Radio Superstar series. So thank you for taking that on with uh, Crash Test Dummies. We've had a lot going on over the last couple of years, especially the last year, my second year as interim pastor with and among you. And last year, it was at this time where we talked about the three things for Calgary that uh, Mayor Nenshi had challenged us to engage in. And I have to say, I'm really delighted and proud of our congregation, of how we've stepped up and really made those three things a very real part of our ministry together. You may remember the first one is tax clinics with a partnership with the Calgary Public Library and the United Way of Calgary. And the uh, second one is our Southwest Conference Refugee Mission to sponsor refugees coming from Syria with, all, with some other churches of, um, of, of Calgary and our participation in From the Cold. I'm just going to go through these uh, a, few, um, a few at a time. First of all, tax clinics. This is, this, for me, this was <laughs> an awesome way for us to really engage in a concrete way to participate in poverty reduction in our city. We had 43, is that right, Wayne? Uh, 43 uh, volunteers from the community and I think another uh, six or eight from our congregation. And it made up a total of 600 volunteer hours with 543 tax returns completed. But that number is soft because some of our tax preparers didn't know how to fill out the form. So I'm thinking it's closer to 700 that we did. So thank you for participating. And thank you for, for, to Wayne for being a big part. Oh, stand up, Wayne for being a big part of that. And Wayne alone put in, I think it was 140, 150 hours to make that happen. So that's a huge amount of work. Also, Tracy Ritchie uh, was put things all together. And we had a lot of other folks in the congregation to really make this effort worthwhile. And uh, we are looking at ways we can do this again for next year, which I'll get into later. Also, our Southwest Conference Refugee Mission, we've we uh, raised $5,000 for that, as well as participated in various tangible ways to help the family who arrived back in September to integrate into the life of our community. And we've had people driving them to, uh, mainly to doctor's appointments. That was our big one our, that we were tasked with, uh, to make sure the family gets the right medical care that they need. So thank you to those who have participated in that. And in From the Cold, which has been ongoing as they move to a new program model, um, we were helping them transition into that service model for them. And thank you for all the hard work and hours you've put in to make that ministry such a success. Other items, uh, the building, of course, we had some improvements over the summer due to some very generous bequests. And thank you for, the, um, for those as we, we need those legacies to move forward as a congregation. These were things we won't be able to do without your generosity. These are our investments for the future as we make this space of ours more habitable. Because I didn't realize just how badly needed the work was done until it was actually done. I didn't realize how awful the chairs were until we we're stacking them, getting them put in the way. I was, I was telling Kelly, we don't need new chairs really. And she goes, yeah, we need new chairs. I'm going, okay. And so I'm stacking these things, you know, as bolts are falling off, there's stains on them, they're just falling apart. And so thank you, for, thank you Kelly, for <laughs> bringing that to our attention and for spearheading all that. And we have a list of all the items with which we uh, did the improve on the building over the course of the year. Also development. Um, this has been a, com, a cause of con concern and conversation within our congregation. And no, the big build, the box out there are not the beginnings of a Tim Hortons that's going to be developed there, unfortunately. Um, this is, uh, Shaw asked if we could use our our parking lot to uh, park their stuff. We didn't give them permission for the stones though, but uh, we'll get that taken care of. But what we are doing is in conversation with a developer, and this is only a preliminary conversation, but we are moving forward in, in this direction. If this 
pans out the way we hope it will, is that they do want to put its importance on that space. And I want to make sure it's good for us um, and it's good for the community and see what else we can do with that. And I know that there is, has been some concern in the congregation. Are we just kind of going to give away our space? No, we are leasing it. We are not selling. We are leasing the land to the, the developer who will then be in charge of creating a, uh, the Tim Hortons. And also people are concerned about losing parking. And that's a, it's a very real concern uh, that we have, especially as my hope is that we will grow over the next few years, but, so we'll lose parking. But we can always you know, fight the Koreans on the, for the street, for, their, for the spots. But, uh, but at the same time, we can, there's always ways we can negotiate parking. But the long and the short of it is we need that kind of development. We need that kind of revenue coming in over the next a uh, few years as uh, the buying power of a dollar decreases, as the cost of maintaining the church increases, we're going to have to be more creative in how we raise revenue that goes beyond your generous donations and investments you give to our congregation. So that is one way we'll be looking at that. And if there's any questions on that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come to that in, in a bit. Uh, community partnerships. These have been a big part of my ministry, mainly because, well, that's kind of what I do, and Bishop Larry had asked me to come here and, and develop that part of your ministry with and among you, and I'm really pleased with that, especially the three things for Calgary, which is kind of taking on a life of its own, telecare with the Good and Spirit Society, and the work of our hands is a new organization that's recently asked us to partner with them, that we are they will be here December 11th to show, uh, show us what they do and to, for us to find ways to partner with them and to you know, look at their wares as it were. They are a fair trade organization specializing in crafts and arts and that sort of thing. Any questions, comments, concerns regarding my report thus far? Okay, very good as we trans transition from interim to what we're about to talk about now regarding the vote you guys had last, uh, last Sunday. My favorite scripture verse is Galatians chapter five, verse one. This has been a, a guiding scripture verse for my life and my ministry throughout my uh, adulthood. It is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. As I said, it's a guiding scripture for both my life and my ministry, and it's because it's a reminder that I'm free to serve as God calls me to serve and not to be forced into expectations that don't fit my gifts or skills. That's why when Bishop Larry presented me with interim ministry, that was very attractive. It was kind of a love them and leave them kind of ministry. I'm only there for a short time. I can do my thing and leave. But when I came here, Staying, being your permanent pastor wasn't at all on my radar screen. It wasn't what I was looking for. In fact, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. My job was to help you transition to the place where you could receive a permanent pastor and then I could take my leave and then to where God only knows where. And I was good with that because I liked the open-endedness of my call here. But it seems that God had other plans. As our time together progressed and the call committee asked that I be a candidate to be a regularly called pastor, I had to stop and think about it. I said yes, because I'm always open to God's call. I had to stop and think about it, pray about it, talk to friends about it, go home for a week so I can get away from Calgary and so I don't have this stuff weighing down on me so I can think about it without other um, expectations weighing on me because this was a better fit than I initially thought it would be. Because people don't like it when I say this, and, but I've told you this before, that First Lutheran has a reputation. <laughs> the reputation is this, that uh, when I was up in Golden Spike, I thought First Lutheran was a conservative, evangelical, quasi-Pentecostal church on the fringes of Lutheranism. <laughs> yeah, I know you have, people hate it when I say that, but that's what, that's what was out there. I think I've done some work in helping people think of our congregation a little bit differently. Because that's not what I found when I arrived. I found instead a thriving, engaged, energetic, forward-thinking congregation who is honest about your faith. I don't get a lot of the meaningless God talk from you guys. And that was refreshing. 
Because Facebook tells me that I moved to Calgary exactly two years ago today. And I can't believe it's been that long, but much has happened in those two years that made me think about my relationship here. Because we've done some excellent work together, I think. And you've pushed me to up my game, for which I'm glad. And now I have in my possession a letter of call for my consideration for which I have 30 days to respond. But I think I can do that today. We've done enough work. We've done enough prayer. We've done enough conversation. But before I make a final decision regarding our future together and put my signature on this document that binds us together, I have some questions for you. And these are taken from the Lutheran Liturgy for Installation. So I ask you, people of God, Congregation of First Lutheran Church Calgary, will you receive me, Pastor Kevin Powell, as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard me as a servant of Christ and as a steward of the mysteries of God? If so, please answer, we will and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for me? Help and honor me for my work's sake and in all things strive to live together in the peace and the unity of Christ. If so, please answer. We will and we ask God to help us. Because you've answered thus, it is with humility, gratitude, joy, and hope that I accept the call to be senior pastor of First Lutheran Church, Calgary. I do not take your faith in me lightly. And with God's help, I know that this will be a fruitful partnership. And I thank you for your trust in me. Over the next two weeks, I'll be outlining my vision for this congregation as we move forward together into the future that God is preparing for us. And these will, this will be a jumping off point for the larger conversation that we will be having as a church as we discern God's direction together. We have both joys, challenges, and opportunities in front of us, as well as possibilities and realities to consider as we move forward. I don't need to tell you this, but being the church today is hard, and it's only going to get harder. But we have a God who raised Jesus from the dead and promises to make everything new again. This church will look different in a few years' time as we meet the needs and the cries of our community. And what won't change is our central message of new life in Jesus Christ. Two years ago, I ended my first sermon with you by saying, we have 104 weeks together. Let's see what we can do with them. Now I can say, we have the coming years together. Let's see what God will do with us and through us as we meet the future with arms and eyes wide open, trusting that the God revealed in Jesus Christ will continue to lead us down the path of faithfulness and hope. And may this be so among us together. I move my report. <laughs>